Hello, my name is Mickey, and today's lesson is the short story, The Open Window by Saki. This is a short story approved for module B. This version of the story is not approved for module D. So if you're studying for module D, make sure to get the correct version. Today we're going to be working on short, simple stories, learning about the important points and the plot, and following events. So, what are we going to do today? First, we'll learn a little bit about the author, the person who wrote the story. Then we'll learn a bit about the setting, where the story takes place, and the characters, who are the people in our story. This story has a lot of characters, so we'll focus on the ones that are important. And then before we start the story, I'll ask you some questions, and I even have a little surprise for you. So, let's start. Our story is called The Open Window, and the author's name is Saki. If you would like to download the whole story, you can scan this code and you'll have a copy of the story that either you could look at or print out. Let's first learn a bit about the author. Saki's name, his real name, was Hector Hugh Monroe. He was born on the 18th of December, 1870, in British Burma. Today's Myanmar. It's north of Thailand, if you ever go there. Hector Hugh Monroe used the pen name Saki. In other words, that was the name that he used when he wrote his stories. The name Saki comes from a Persian poem written by Omar Khayyam. It's also the name of a monkey. And if you Google Saki, you can see pictures of the monkey. In 1896, he moved to London. He wrote many articles for newspapers. He also wrote history books, novels, and short stories. During World War I, he fought in France for the British Army. He was shot by a German sniper on the 14th of November, 1916, and he was only 45 years old. As usual, before we start our reading, we're going to do a few activities to sort of get us in to the story. First is the setting. The setting talks about where the story takes place and when. In our story, The Open Window, it takes place somewhere in Britain, in England, in the country. The country meaning the opposite of the city. Sometimes, when rich people would get sick, they would leave the city and go to the country to find peace and quiet. In other words, the city would be noisy and they would go to the country where it was quiet and then they could get better. Sometimes though, they would stay with people that they didn't know, that they had never met before. When does our story take place? Our story takes place in October, in the autumn. And this is also important because the fall is hunting season. When the British would go out with their dogs and their guns and they would hunt birds or animals. Our story takes place in the country house of Mrs. Sappleton. And I have here a picture that shows you a house in the country. As I mentioned before, 
we have a lot of characters, but I'll mention our three main characters. The first character is Mr. Frampton Nettle. Frampton Nettle is a man with a nervous illness. In other words, it's like he's sick, but not with a flu, with something more in his head. And he goes to the country to get well. He's looking for peace and quiet so that he could calm his nerves down. Our next character is Mrs. Sappleton. Mrs. Sappleton owns the house in the country. It's her house. She lives in the house with her niece, Vera. Her niece would be the daughter of either a brother or a sister of Mrs. Sappleton. Vera is 15 years old, and she likes to tell stories. We have other characters in the, in the story, like Mr. Nettle's sister, and Mr. Sapleton, Mrs. Sapleton's husband, and her two younger brothers. But they're not really important in order to understand the story. Now I have some questions for you. Have you ever played a practical joke on someone? What is a practical joke? It's like teasing someone or doing something that you think is funny, but they might not think it's funny. Have you heard of April Fool's Day? April Fool's Day is a day on the first day of April when people play practical jokes. They usually play practical jokes to their friends and their family, but there have been a lot of situations where even newspapers will come out with practical jokes and try and fool the people into believing that it's true. These practical jokes are done so that the people become embarrassed and sometimes act a little silly. Let's take a look at an example of a practical joke that just recently happened. Have you been staying at home now? How did you know when to go back to school? Well, here's a joke where the parents of two girls told them that it was time to go back to school. I've got you some mop though. Right girls, right there. I'm gonna do a oh. video for your first day back. Are you excited? Uh, yeah. See you for a no. right. Now let's make sure you've got everything ready that you need to know. So, it's been a while since you've been back to school. What year is it? Can you remember? 2020. 2020. And can you remember what the date is? You need to know the date for school? First of April, yeah. Uh, so this is first day back after the coronavirus. Have you ever heard of any traditions on the first of April? No. No? Have you heard of a thing called April Fool? Yes. Yes. What's an April Fool? Like a prank. A prank. Like when someone tells you that is it's it time to go back to school when it's not time to go back to school. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, but please be careful. Some practical jokes could actually be dangerous and people could get hurt. But we're going to have to wait a while until the next time we have the 1st of April. So our story, The Open Window, is about a young girl who likes to make up stories. To make up stories means, like a practical joke, they might not be true. She decides to play a 
practical joke on a stranger. Now, let's see if you will believe her story. The Open Window by Saki, part one. As usual, first we go over some vocabulary words. Some of them we've already discussed. I hope some of them you know. Country, we said, is out in the country, not in the city. Nerves, we talked about, are when someone is very nervous and doesn't know what to do. He's like very shaky. A cure is when someone gets better, when they get well. Peace and quiet, we spoke about already. Strangers are people that you do not know. An aunt is the brother or sister of a niece. So here we have Mrs. Sapleton, who is the aunt, and her niece is Vera. And a tragedy is when something terrible happens. So let's start our story. My aunt will be down soon, said the very cool young lady of 15. While you wait, you must try to put up with me. Frampton Nettle was in the country as part of a cure for his nerves. What you need is some peace and quiet, his doctor had said. Spend some time away from the city. It will do you good. Just to mention that to put up was like, you're stuck with me. Frampton did not know anyone in the country, but his sister had given him letters to people she knew there. If you don't speak to anyone, your nerves will be worse than ever, she had said. You should try to make new friends. Some of these people are quite nice. Frampton did not think that visits to strangers would help much. He hoped that Mrs. Stapleton, Sapleton, the aunt, was one of the nice ones. Now again, Frampton did not know these people. They were strangers. His sister had met them, and his sister wrote some letters to these people saying, this is my brother. Please be nice to him. He needs some peace and quiet. Frampton looked at the cool young lady. He tried to find the right thing to say, but do you know many people around here? She asked. I don't know anyone, said Frampton. My sister stayed with friends here about four years ago. She gave me letters to some of them so they would know who I was. Then you know almost nothing about my aunt, the niece said. Only her name and address, said Frampton. Her great tragedy happened just three years ago, said the girl. That would be since your sister was here. Her tragedy? Asked Frampton. Tragedies seemed out of place in this quiet country spot. So Frampton knows nothing about the aunt, nothing about her family. Her sister had, his sister had been there four years ago, and the niece now said the tragedy was three years ago. And Frampton looks around at this beautiful home in the country, and he can't imagine what sort of tragedy could be there. Okay, let's ask some questions before going on. 
Let's read the questions, and then I'll give you a minute just to think about them, and then we'll go over the answers. Where does the story take place? What is our setting? Who are our three main characters? Why is Frampton there? Does Frampton know these people? When was Frampton's sister there? And last, when was the tragedy? Take just a few seconds and think of the answers and we'll go over them together. Okay, so where does our story take place? In the country, not in the city. And who are our, our, our three main characters? Frampton, Vera, and Mrs. Sappleton. Why is Frampton there? To cure his nerves, to get well. Does Frampton know these people? No, he doesn't know them. His sister knows them. When was Frampton's sister there? Right, four years ago. And when was the tragedy? Three years ago. Okay, so what do you think happened? What was this great tragedy? And now a few more vocabulary words. Lawn is a place where grass grows. To hunt, we talked about. A swamp is where a lot of bushes and, and mud and water and to drown is when you go under the water and you can't get out. A coincidence is hmm, something that happens at the same time. And creepy, well, <laughs> creepy. Let's see if the story gets creepy. You may wonder why we keep that window wide open on an October afternoon, said Denise. She pointed to a large French window that opened onto the lawn. And here I found a picture for you of a French window. You could see it's a window that's actually a door. Does that window have anything to do with the tragedy? Frampton asked. It started when they went out through that window three years ago today. Her husband, and her two young brothers. They were going hunting. They never came back. They slipped into a swamp and drowned. Their bodies were never found. That was the terrible part of it. Here the girl's voice lost its coolness. My poor aunt. She thinks they will come back someday. They and the little brown dog that was with them. She believes that they will walk through the window just as they used to do. That is why the window is kept open every evening. I'm so sorry that I've come on this to visit on this tragic anniversary, Frampton said weakly. An unfortunate coincidence, the niece mumbled. She seemed to be immersed in her thoughts. My poor dear aunt, she finally said. She has often told me how they went out. Her husband had his red coat over his arm. Ronnie, her younger brother, was singing an old song, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. He did that to tease her. She said it got on her nerves. You know, sometimes on a still, quiet evening like this, I get a creepy feeling. I almost think they will all walk in through the window. She broke off, shaking her head. Frampton shivered. At that moment, the aunt came into the room, saying how sorry she was to be so late. 
Now let's go over this part with a few questions. When does the story take place? Is the window open or closed? When did the tragedy begin? Who went hunting? What happened to them? Why is the window open? Take just a few seconds and we'll go over the answers. When does the story take place? In October. Is the window open or closed? The window is open. When did the tragedy begin? Three years ago. Who went hunting? Mrs. Sappleton's husband and her two brothers. And what happened to them? They drowned. And why is the window open? Because Mrs. Sappleton believes that they will return. Now, we mentioned before that her brother Ronnie used to sing a song, and I would like to play the song for you now. And then you could go on a break for about 10 minutes, and we'll come back and continue the story. So let's listen to the song. The song, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, is a traditional folk song from Scotland. A bonnie is a beautiful person, and the song is waiting for a person to return. My bonnie lies over the ocean, my bonnie lies over the sea, my bonnie lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my bonnie to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my bonnie to me. Last night as I lay. On my pillow.
Hi, welcome back. And let's continue with our story, The Open Window by Saki. But before we continue, let's look over what we know so far. Mr. Frampton Nuttall went to the country to cure his nerves. He went to get well. He went to a family that he did not know. Mrs. Sappleton's 15-year-old niece told him a story. The story was about how Mrs. Sappleton's husband and two brothers died. The window was left open because Mrs. Sappleton believed they would return. And now let's go on with our story, The Open Window. First, as usual, some vocabulary. Muddy is when you have mud with water and dirt. It's an adjective describing an area. To make a mess, everything's all over the place. A carpet is what you would put on a floor. To pay attention, hmm, pay attention carefully. Are you listening? Awful, something awful happened. A medical condition is like, I don't have any medical conditions, I'm very healthy. At last, hmm, at last something happened at the end. And horror, well, you know horror from like horror movies, things are scary. And now let's go on with our story. I hope you have enjoyed talking to Vera, Mrs. Sappleton said. She has been very interesting, said Frampton. I hope you don't mind the open window, said Mrs. Sappleton brightly. My husband and brothers will be home soon. They've been hunting, and they always come in this way. Their shoes will be muddy, so they'll make a mess of my poor carpet. But that's the way men are, isn't it? She rattled on cheerfully. She talked about hunting and how it might be better next winter. To Frampton, it was awful. He tried to change the subject, but he saw that Vera's aunt was not paying much attention. Her eyes were on the open window and the lawn. He made a desperate effort to turn the talk to his medical condition. The doctors say I should do nothing exciting and get lots of rest, Frampton explained. He, he had not yet learned that few people were interested in the health of others. Now, on the matter of diet, they are not so much in agreement. Hmm. Let's take a stop. The aunt was looking out the window, waiting for her husband and brothers to return. And poor Frampton, this is horrible. So he just starts talking about anything he can talk about, what the doctor said, about food, anything. Let's go on. No, said Mrs. Sappleton in a voice which only replaced a yawn at the last moment. Then her face grew brighter, but it was not because of what Frampton was saying. Here they are at last, she cried, just in time for tea. And they look as if they are muddy up to their eyes. Frampton shivered slightly and toward, turned toward the niece to give her an understanding look. The girl was staring out, the, out through the open window with horror in her eyes. Frampton swung around in his sweet seat and looked 
in the same direction. It was horrible. Pause, breathe, the story is getting exciting and we have to remember that Frampton has to stay calm. So, what did Mrs. Sappleton talk about? What did Frampton talk about? What did Mrs. Sappleton see? How did Vera react? And what did Frampton do? Take just a minute to go over these questions. So what did Mrs. Sappleton talk about? That her husband would be home soon. Any minute they'll be walking through the door all muddy from hunting. And what did Frampton talk about? His medical condition, anything. Just not to have the aunt talk about her husband. And what did Mrs. Appleton see? She saw the men coming home. Here they are, coming through the window. And how did Vera react? She was shocked. She had a look of horror. And what did Frampton do? He turned around and looked out the window. What did Vera and Frampton actually see out the window? And now some vocabulary for the last part of our story. Twilight is at the very end of the day, just when it starts getting dark. A mad dash is to run very quickly. An illness we talk about is to get sick. An apology is to say, I'm sorry. And a ghost, ooh, maybe they saw a ghost. And a graveyard is a place where they bury dead people. And a speciality is something that you could be very, very good at doing. But if we were to look at these words, what do you think is going to happen? In the gray twilight, three figures were walking across the lawn toward the window. They all carried guns under their arms. One of them had a red coat over his shoulders. A tired brown dog kept close to their heels. Without making a sound, they walked toward the house. Then a young voice began to sing, My Bonnie lies over the ocean. Frampton grabbed wild, wildly at his stick and his hat and made a mad dash for the door. Out in the road, a cyclist, a bicyclist, had to run into the hedge to keep from hitting him. Here we are, said the man with the red coat coming through the window. We're muddy, but most of it is dry. Who was that who rushed out as we came up? A very strange young man, a Mr. Nuttall, said Mrs. Sapleton. He could only talk about his illnesses and dashed off without a word of goodbye or apology when you arrived. One would think he had seen a ghost. I think it was the dog, said Vera calmly. He told me he was awfully afraid of dogs. He was once chased into a graveyard in India by a pack of wild dogs. He had to spend the night in a newly dug grave with the dogs barking and howling above him, enough to make anyone lose their nerve. Making up exciting stories was Vera's speciality.
And now let's look at some of the final questions and then do some activities. Who came in the French window? Who else was with them? What did Frampton do? Did he say goodbye? What did Vera say about Frampton? Were Vera's stories true? Take just a minute to think of these questions, and then we'll go over the answers. OK, so who came in the French window? The three men, Mrs. Sappleton's husband and her two younger brothers, just like Vera said they would. And who else was with them? A tired brown dog. And what did Frampton do? He ran away as quickly as he could. He ran out of the house. Did he say goodbye? No. He didn't say goodbye, or he didn't say sorry for leaving so quickly. He just ran like crazy. What did Vera say about Frampton? She said that he was scared of the dog. He was afraid of the dog. And were Vera's stories true? No, they weren't. Not the story about Mrs. Sappleton's husband and brothers dying, and not the story about Frampton being scared of the dog. So now let's do some post-reading activities and see whether you understood. And at the end, there will be a quiz. So be ready. Have your phones out and ready. Let's do some true or false questions. One. Mrs. Frampton, Frampton knew Mrs. Sappleton, true or false? What do you think? It's false. He did not know Mrs. Sappleton. Frampton was sick. Is that true or false? Yes, that's true. He was sick, but not with a health sickness, but with a sickness in his mind. Frampton lived in the country. Did he live in the country? No, he didn't. He lived in the city. The tragedy happened three years ago. Well, at the beginning of the story, we think that's true. But was there really a tragedy? No. Vera made it up. Mrs. Sappleton believed her husband was dead? No. Why would she believe that they were dead when they weren't dead? Was her husband dead? No, he wasn't dead, and neither were her brothers. Frampton stayed for dinner. Did he stay for dinner? No. As soon as Mrs. Sappleton's husband and brothers came in, he ran away as fast as he could. He didn't stay for dinner. Was Frampton afraid of dogs? Was it the dog that made him run away? No. Why did Frampton run away? I'll let you think about that. Vera liked making up stories. Oh, yes, and it was her speciality. She loved making up stories. OK, now let's have some discussions. Some say that Vera made up the story about Mrs. Appleton's husband and brothers because she did not want Frampton in their house. Think about that for a minute. This man comes who she has no idea who he is. He's never met the family before. And he's supposed to stay in their house until he gets better. So maybe Vera didn't want him there. Maybe Vera wanted him to leave. And maybe that's why she told the story about the great tragedy of the family. What do you think? A lot of times when we read stories, we can ask questions that we don't really know the answer. It's how what we think 
might be the reason for something happening. So think about that. Do you think that what she did was right? Do you think that making up a story about a tragedy was right? Have you ever done anything that you thought would be funny, but in the end actually hurt someone? There have been a number of stories lately of, um, on TikTok where they do jokes where like they do people and they have to jump up and down and then they put out their leg and they make them fall. Is that funny? Can people get hurt by doing something like that? You have to be very, very careful if you play a practical joke on someone that they don't get hurt. So think about that before you play a joke on someone. Is it funny or are you actually hurting someone? Okay, and that ends our story. And now for the quiz. You have here a QR code. You can scan it. Today it doesn't matter which way you hold your phone. Both will work fine. You can write your name. I would love if you would write your name but you don't have to. You could write the name of your school. I won't tell your teacher your grade, but I would like to know. And as soon as you answer all the questions on the quiz, you'll get a grade and see how well you've learned the story, The Open Window. So what did we do today? We learned about the author, Saki. We learned about the setting and the characters of the story, The Open Window. We answered not a lot of questions actually today. We learned new vocabulary and hopefully you learned some new words and reviewed words that you know. And we read the wonderful story, The Open Window. So I'd like to thank you for joining me today. There are a lot of other good stories out there and if you look for my name, Mickey, you'll find all of them. Bye-bye.